Teenagers who take pledges of abstinence are not necessarily less sexually active than other adolescents. A new study from John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health found that promising absence doesn't seem to have much of an effect on sexual behavior. Joining us today via satellite from Baltimore is the lead author of the report, Dr. Janet Rosenbaum. Dr. Rosenbaum, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about that study. What'd you find? Well, as you might imagine, abstinence pledgers are a great deal more religious and conservative than the average American teenager. So they would be expected to, to delay sex whether or not they took a pledge. This study attempted to compare apples to apples, to compare similar t sorts of teenagers that are similarly socially and religiously conservative. I found that virginity pledgers had no different sexual behavior than non-pledgers, not even in oral sex, which had been uh, hypothesized to be a substitute. And I found more disturbingly, though, that virginity pledgers were 10 percentage points less likely to use condoms and also less likely to use birth control. Okay, we're going to talk about the condoms and the birth control in just a minute. What's going on here? Why are these folks, why are these teens making these pledges and not sticking to it? Why are they doing it in the first place? What's going on here? Uh, the uh, teenagers that get involved in abstinence pledges tend to be very religious and part of a social group which uh, is also taking the pledge. So it may be that uh, the teenagers are doing it when that's part of their social context. And then five years later, when we're looking at their outcomes, they've changed entirely their social context, so it's no longer salient to them. I found also that 80, over 80% 80 of virginity pledgers say five years later that they never took one, although they had said five years earlier that they had taken one. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, what does that say for these type of programs that ask these kids to make these pledges? They're clearly, I mean, they're not working according to your study, so why are they even implemented in the first place? Well, it's a, it's a very good goal to, to have the goal of causing kids to delay sex. Delayed sex is an important public health objective. Younger teenagers are more likely to get STDs than kids in their early 20s. And so the abstinence pledge was designed by uh, many religious groups as an attempt to cause this, uh, this objective. And it happens not to have worked. Uh, there are programs that work, though, the sex education programs that teach birth control. Okay, let's, let's talk about uh, the birth control. Uh, you did find some surprising differences between the use of condoms and uh, birth control, other birth control methods, yes? Yes, the uh, Government Accountability Office had a report in which they found that many abstinence-only sex education projects, which are the ones that, uh, that, these, that these pledges are part of, actually um, do have, uh, actually have in inaccurate information. So for example, one, one state curriculum said that HIV can pass through a latex condom. That's obviously not true, but this was in the curriculum. And there are many other s similar sorts of inaccuracies about birth control and condoms. So if you're taught this kind of negative information, it's no wonder you wouldn't bother to use condoms because you believe that they have no purpose. Condoms, in fact, do pr prevent uh, almost entirely against any fluid transmitted STD. And they, com they protect against contact transmitted STDs to the extent that they cover. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we're talking with Janet Rosenbaum of the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Dr. Rosenbaum, thank you so much for joining us on our show today. Some great information. Hopefully our teens will uh, take this to heart. When you think health, think IRU.